Hi and welcome back to Raise Your Vibes with Miriam Khan. So one of my very popular podcasts for downloads has been the one about um, dealing with toxic siblings and it's been quite interesting to watch how that particular podcast has been listened to over and over and over again and obviously you know some podcasts that I've done sometimes need a bit of an update so I thought I would do one on how you deal with toxic siblings when they are trying to get back into your life or, you know, trying to perhaps uh, interfere with your life, even though you've cut ties, even though you've cut bonds or you've, you know, distanced yourself and so on. So let's have a look at this particular uh, phase or let's look at this particular situation because it does occur. And in some cases, it's trickier to deal with than in others. So Obviously, if you've been in a situation where you've not got on with that particular sub- sibling for various reasons, you know, they might, might be a narcissist, they might be someone that's controlling, abusive or rude, you clash, uh, siblings do often clash, they're not often close. It might be that you just are on two different pages, you see the world differently, you have different viewpoints, which is understandable, you know, and, you know, this particular person you have tried really hard to cut them out of your life, you've tried to, you know, separate yourself from them, you might have just distanced yourself and maybe the only times you see each other or have any interactions with each other is sadly when there are deaths involved or there's some sort of family uh, connection or gathering where you have to communicate or sort of don't communicate, you know. I've known some siblings be in the same house but not in the same room or the same vicinity as each other sometimes they keep themselves at a distance sometimes they just don't have anything to do with each other at all from a practical point of view or from a personal point of view these things you know occur then there's the other extreme where some of these toxic siblings will do everything that they can to intervene in your life and to cause chaos and to cause misery and to cause conflict and even though you have gone out of your way as you know the person that sort of retracted set back distanced yourself you've tried to put barriers in place you've perhaps tried to put boundaries in place you know you've made it clear to certain people within your inner circle that this particular sibling is not uh, someone that you, you know get on with um it could be that for example you've you've blocked them from social networking sites to get in you know, in your life and be involved in your life or in the physical sense where you've put boundaries in place, you don't want them around you. If you're interacting with family members, which is quite hard, you might have got it to a point where, you know, you only visit your your family members at a particular time when that person is not there. It's not easy to organise. It's not easy to, you know, um, sort that situation out because there will be conflict. There will be people intermingling with one another so there are often situations where that particular scenario can be quite difficult to deal with and these particular individuals will go out of their way to make life hard and to make life difficult they will on purpose manipulate and coerce and to try and you know get a reaction out of people as well and that is not easy to deal with as well and these scenarios happen because that person is desperate for some sort of um, you know reaction they feed off it almost like an energy vampire so it's not hard um, you know to keep bumping into them if we live in different cities different countries different places sometimes that does make it easier for us to distance ourselves and to set boundaries or reset boundaries but often that is not easy to do so this is what I'm saying, where we're living in a close proximity of these people, then it's very difficult, you know, because those particular individuals will make our lives a misery and they'll do whatever they can. It's difficult too when, you know, youngsters are involved. If you've got nephews, nieces, you might want to be around them. You might want to have that bond and that relationship with them. But that toxic sibling either makes it very difficult for you to have that relationship Or you yourself decide that, you know, for your own sanity's sake, it's best not to be involved and it's best to stand back, which can be also quite hurtful, you know. It's hurtful that sometimes children, unfortunately, are the cost of that, the price of that. But if it means peace 
to you and it means peace to that child as well because you know you're not involving them in the drama you're not involving them in what's going on around you and their parent you know you're not getting them involved in that toxicity you're just distancing yourself you're separating yourself and you're showing that you know you can be the mature one you can be the grown-up one and you're having to stand back in many many ways it's not easy to do it takes strength it takes resilience it takes courage it takes determination and it takes a lot of pride and love and you know self-respect not to get caught up in these scenarios and to be dragged into it that is not easy to do it's not easy to do at all and there are times um, that I've personally experienced through friends myself my own situations where you know some of these siblings will do everything they can to try and get a reaction you know and they will try and get uh, provoke a reaction Sometimes you might go in a situation where you've had that silence and you've had that resilience and you've put those boundaries in and that person has repeatedly tried very, very hard to break your barriers down. You've done everything you can. Maybe you've blocked them on social media. Maybe you've distanced yourself. Maybe you've changed your number. Even when you've, you're visiting family and friends, maybe you do it in a way where you know, you're not getting that other person involved. You're distancing yourself and you're separating yourself and you're putting, you know, healthy barriers in place, you know. Uh, maybe you only gather at um, certain family gatherings, you know, that are crucial in the year. And that is your way of dealing with it. That is your way of dealing with this particular scenario. And you do that for your own mental health. You know, you do that because that's the best way to get through this particular situation. And, you know, that's the best way for you to to go forward because... Some family members, some family siblings will make it extremely difficult. And all the while, while you are putting those barriers in and you are putting resilience in and you're showing yourself, you know, self-love and respect, unfortunately, that person may potentially be crying victim as well. You know, and it can be hard, can't it, when, you know, your parents or um, aunts, uncles and so on, uh, they sometimes don't want to get involved or sometimes what they do as well is they side with the individual and unfortunately this is where you end up being the black sheep of the family you know because you're the one not willing to comply you're the one putting the boundaries in putting the respect in showing that this is the way I would wish to be treated with respect with courtesy with, you know, any human compassion, any human resources that I want to do in a decent way, you know, you might have boundaries in regards to the tone of voice, how you speak, the mannerisms and so on. And not everybody is willing to comply. Some people are quite happy to see other people broken. And some people enjoy the entertainment value of, you know, the fact that there is friction and there is toxicity between siblings, that the siblings are at each other's throat, so to speak. And that's where it can be quite toxic because that environment, that audience, you know, is feeding off your situation. And again, that leads us back to this whole idea of, you know, the the reminiscence against or um, the ramifications of what is going on around you and that environment around you. It is not easy to leave. It is not easy to distance yourself. And sometimes we have to. Sometimes we have to make the most biggest sacrifices of our, of our lives by choosing ourselves and choosing peace. And the cost of that peace means that we don't see those toxic um, siblings anymore. We put those boundaries in. And as I said, the, the consequence or the price of that is the people around us. It can be family members, you know. It can be that we don't get to see nieces, nephews. We don't get to see our parents uh, as much as we'd want to. And the advantage of that in some respects is that you've got peace in your own life, but it comes at a big cost, you know. And it's not easy to outweigh that. Some of these toxic siblings will go out of their way to, you know, make rumours, to constantly be in your business without actually being in your business you know and constantly you know uh, going backwards and forth and telling people about the things that you're doing or the things that you shouldn't be doing 
um, getting involved perhaps, you know, in your marriage, in your relationship or your work. These are just some examples that I've known people do because they'll do everything they can to try and control you and your situation, you know. And sometimes they find it very, very difficult to find anything on yourself personally. So that's why they go to outer sources, you know. And it's hard. Um, that individual who's toxic, the sibling that's toxic, will almost be, you know, like a dog with a bone. They will constantly want to bring you down. They will constantly find issues. They will constantly find scenarios where they want to put you as the bad guy, So you know, as we say. And you're not. You're just someone who's finding peace, finding, um, you know, uh, a moment in your life where you're wanting clear boundaries and you're saying, I will be spoken to with respect. I'll be treated with respect. You won't raise your voice with me. I don't want you saying anything negative, you know. Um, I want you to have some form of resilience in regards to the way that you speak. And when you speak to me, you speak to me with respect. You know, you don't, everything is not, for example, a cuss word, you know. As and when um, we do have to have interactions, these are the, gra the, the, you know, the boundaries I want. Some individuals, like I said, are very good at playing their own narrative. You know, they make themselves out to be the victim. And that's when, so sadly, like I said, when family members get involved, they end up choosing sides. And sometimes you do end up being the black sheep of the family because you've decided not to play along. Um, the toxic sibling, you know, sees that as a victory and sees you as the weak point and they'll do everything they can to make you look bad, to make you look, um, you know, like you're the bad guy. And it's hard. It is really hard. Sometimes I've known family members go back to try and make peace, to try and be civilised with that family member. And then there are other times when some gap, you know, has passed, some time has passed. They've tried um, to go back in. They've tried to, I guess, you know, tread with care. And they've tried to get back in that situation only to find the same result again, you know. It might be that that person for a short space of time pretends that, yes, you know, I've changed. I'm not like that anymore. And then they show the true colours again. So you have to be the one that has to wake up and decide what's your value, what's your worth. Do you want to be in a situation where you repeatedly are in that predicament where this toxicity is taking over all the time? Are you going to be the one that's resilient? Are you going to be the one that's kind? Are you going to be the one that forgives? Sometimes some of our, um, you know, relationships with our siblings, we can have forgiveness. We can grow together and not grow apart. But it's all about family dynamics, isn't it? And it's all about you trying to work out whether you can repair this situation with that toxic sibling or not. And sadly, you know, in a lot of cases, you can't. You really can't. Um, I could speak from personal experience where, you know, I had almost a gap of two years where I did not communicate with one person like this. And it was a situation where, you know, I was told, oh, by the way, a relative has died uh, through a message, you know, and that was the, the contact that I had had with this particular sibling. And prior to that, I had cut them out of my life, um, you know, and I had put barriers in place. I had put situations in place. And it took a long time for that sibling to, I guess, respect it, you know. And you have to stand by what you've said as well, you know. And you have to stand by um, your decision because some of these siblings that are toxic will do everything they can to, um, you know, intervene and will do everything they can to disrespect the rules you've put in place. And that's because they want to undermine you. And they also want to remind you that, you know, your, your, your family, your blood, you shouldn't be doing this. Well, sometimes blood is not thicker than water, you know. Sometimes external friends are much, much better and more supportive than actual blood members, you know, and blood family. And that's something that people learn as well. So that's something you have to bear in mind when you're in this particular predicament and this particular scenario. And like I said, it's not easy to do. So how do the rest of us cope with situations like this, you know, in different scenarios like this where 
that toxic person gets in touch, all of you will be in different predicaments. My particular predicament is right for me. Blocking someone, cutting them out, uh, putting barriers in place is the right thing for me to personally do. But, you know, all of you will be coming at this from different angles and different perspectives and you'll have different scenarios um, to bear in mind. And you have to calculate the cost, you know, and I don't mean uh, physical cost as in money sense. I mean cost as in your mental health, cost as in your time, cost in stress, anxiety, your family connections and so on. Each of us have to weigh up and balance out what we think is right for us. And each predicament, each situation is going to be different. Mine's going to be different to yours and so on. And, you know, close members of family and loved ones and friends aren't always going to, you know, um, understand the decisions that you make. If you make that decision to cut that person out of your life, then that's what you've decided to do. And you have to stand by that. If you decide at some point that you can repair those bridges and welcome that person back into your life, brilliant. You welcome them back into your life and you put those boundaries in. You are the master of your own destiny. You are the person that makes those decisions and you are the one that has to let people decide what is happening, you know, and respect what's happening as well. So if you make that choice, that's down to you. Some of us, you know, we will understand that to a certain degree and then we walk away. And all of us, like I said, are very unique in that respect. So you have to look at that. There are situations where you just can't repair bridges at all. Even if that person decides to get back in touch and decides to try and repair things, decides to try and rebuild things, it's just too much, you know? It's just too much. Too much has happened and we can't. And we also have to bear that in mind as well. And we also have to respect that as well. So either way, you hopefully have gone through that journey of resilience. You've gone through that journey of experience, meditation, forgiveness, forgetting. Sometimes we can't forget and sometimes we can't forgive. But we have to sometimes also give ourselves that peace of mind and let go. And that as well is quite difficult to do, you know. So wherever you are in your journey with your sibling that's, you know, the toxic family member, that's got back in touch, reflect on it. Don't react straight away. Don't go into anger mode straight away. React in a peaceful, calm manner, you know? And like I said, until someone puts you in that position or situation, only you can decide what's right for you. So wherever you are in this particular journey, in this particular aspect, I hope and pray that you make the right choice and they make the right decision for you and your family members. That's all for now. Take care. Bye-bye.